The following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. Every day, citizens around the country are faced with new dilemmas. Dilemmas that affect them profoundly. Whether it's injustice, discrimination, falling through the cracks, scandals and cronyism, balances of power, ethics, religious freedoms, state versus citizens and unfunded mandates, and the list goes on and on and on. Welcome to Speak Up. It's directed at those who have fallen through the cracks and it gives them a voice. It's your turn to speak up, to stand up and fight back. Welcome to another episode of Speak Up. I'm Kevin Avard, your host, and today we're going to be talking about common law and grand juries. And uh, where did this idea come from, uh, the Constitution, and uh, some areas of which you guys are going to educate me on this, this type of stuff. And so uh, I'd like to introduce um, Richard Merritt. Dean Kern. Dean Kern. And you're with the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance. No, National Liberty Alliance. National Liberty Alliance. Okay, National Liberty Alliance. Right. I apologize. It's all right. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. I like Pleasure it when somebody comes uh, either with a New Testament or a, uh, a worn-out constitution. It's wonderful. It's well-read. <laughs> there you go. So... Uh, you know, we, we were talking off camera a little bit about the courts and about some of their unaccountability to the people and how we've migrated to this. Uh, you know, a few years back, we talked about CACR 26 in New Hampshire, where we were going to at least take the rulemaking authority and bring it back to the people so that they can have at least uh, a say on, on the rulemaking authority of the courts. I sit on Jelcar as a senator. In JELCAR, basically, we, we approve the rules that the departments, the executive branch, makes. And sometimes those rules don't seem to jive with the, with the law. So if we make a law that you can't ride a red bicycle on, on the sidewalk, well, then there's rules to enforce that with, with a, a department or if there's something for Health and Human Services or Department of you know, Corrections or some whatever the executive branch does to... Um, enforce these laws, their rules that they make. In 1978, that rulemaking authority was taken away from the people with regards to the courts, at least the, the New Hampshire courts. And so we tried to fight to get that back because, in other words, we can make a law and the courts can make their own rules to support that law. Or not support it. Or not support it, or and, and there's no oversight with the people. So in other words, we have, a, instead of a Co-equal branches, we have branches that are autonomous. autonomous and unaccountable to the people. The legislator and the governor, the executive branch, they're both accountable to the people. What's not? And that's not the way it was designed. Well, so I, I, I start off with that kind of a conversation because that's my understanding of, you know, a, a certain amount of accountability in the bar and, and whatnot. And I'm not an attorney. I don't play one on TV. So you guys wanted to come to talk about this, so I, I, I welcome the, the conversation. Appreciate it. Thank yeah, you. I wanted to say that the um, United States Constitution, the supreme law of the land, it says so in uh, Article 6, Section 2. That's not something that anybody makes up. It's right here. Every law has to be in compliance with this or it's null and void from the date of its inception. And I can cite many Supreme Court cases, mm -hmm. uh, Marbury versus Madison, Murdoch versus Pennsylvania, uh, what is that? Shuttlesworth. One? They all say basically that if any law, rule, or regulation is repugnant to the Constitution, it's null and void from the date of its inception. Now, what if an attorney comes and says, "Well, you know, we've got case law that says this, 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 and this," and and you know that that doesn't apply? Well, if it, first of all, attorneys in this book, attorneys and lawyers aren't even mentioned. They don't run our courts. The bar runs our courts, but the bar is the British Accreditation Registry. Why do they take an oath to another country? or an association in another country. That's my point. Mm -hmm. Secondly, um, what I wanted to point out to, you, to your listeners, and I hope this goes viral, by the way, I mean, not because I'm on the show or Dean's on the show. I hope it goes viral you, just Kevin, because, but, you know. You no, know, because there's a big 
issue, and I've been studying this book for years, um, it's the ignorance of the American people. And I'm going to illustrate that and prove it to you. Mm -hmm. By the way, I'm not a pompous son of a bee. I was ignorant for a lot of years, too. Now, you're, you're, recently your I, background is in law enforcement? Yes, it is. In Massachusetts, not yeah. in New Hampshire. As a police officer? Or? I was a uh, correction officer and a special state police officer in Massachusetts, yes. For 16 years, then I did some consulting work around the country. Um, but what I wanted to say is, for an example, in this book, now this is the supreme law of the land. Mm -hmm. I don't care what any lawyer or judge says. This is the law. I'll tell them to their face. I could care less. I'll fight you for this in court. I'll take you to where I need to take you to fight this issue. Mm -hmm. The Second Amendment says the right, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Now, I know what that means. I think you guys know what it means. You can't infringe upon it. You can't move towards it. Stay where the hell you are. Leave it alone. Okay, then why is it that the legislature, and I'm, gonna, I'm not picking on you, by the way, so I won't take this personal. But why is it the legislature passes a statute that violates this law, the supreme law of the land? And these other supporting documents that I told you says, well, that's null and void. That statute's null and void. Ignore it. You don't have to. And now, secondly, though, the police come along and they enforce the statute that the legislature made. I'm, I'm making a contention here, and me and Dean and you will go out and we'll get our permit to carry a gun. Okay? Knowing full well, wait a minute, what, is, what does infringe mean? Well, you know, I know what it means. You don't Getting need to a get permit. a permit. So the legislature is ignorant, the police, the law enforcement are ignorant, and the people are ignorant. That's, and I'm, like I said, I'm including myself in that. And I believe it's Maggie, our ignorance that is bringing this country down. I believe Governor Hassan has vetoed twice now. She's committing an act of treason, by the way, and I'm saying that publicly. You don't, if you take an oath to uphold this, the foundation of America, okay, to uphold the Bill of Rights, <coughs> and then you turn around and you say, Nope, you can't carry a gun, you need a permit. You just violated my rights. You took an oath to uphold the Bill of Rights, my rights, and his rights, and your rights. Why the hell, pardon my French, but why the hell are you doing this, acting against this? Mm -hmm. And it's not just the, the, the gun permit. I don't need a license to drive a car unless I'm driving a commercial vehicle. I believe a state rep, uh, representative was... Uh, it was Bill Goulet, Bill a good Goulet. friend of mine and a very smart man. I admire him a lot. And what he told me was, and I'm not trying to put him in a thing, but all the people on the committee voted it down. They said, Jesus, look at the revenue we're going to lose. Well, if you want to work for the state and you're concerned about generating revenue, you should get out of politics. If you want to help your constituents, then get into politics. Because I don't know why people are running for, for office. Is it to generate money? If I go into law enforcement, which I'm going to try to do here in New Hampshire, I'm not concerned with generating income. I'm concerned with enforcing the laws. Right. That's my job. I mean, if someone else wants to say, well, you've got you to go out and write 50 tickets, you know, speeding tickets or parking tickets or whatever. By the way, parking tickets, is a, they're a bill of attainder. They're illegal. They're unconstitutional. They violate this too. But everybody pays it, and the police enforce it. We're all guilty. Because if you don't pay it, then they'll come and take your car away. We're all guilty, Kevin. That's my point is we're all guilty. The legislature, law enforcement, the judges, and forget the judges. They're totally corrupt. I'll get into that with any of them. I'm invited. We've got um, a show, Inform New, yeah, Inform New Hampshire, I'm sorry, in Manchester, and I've invited judges and police on the show to mm -hmm. talk about it. Dean, what's your background? Uh, basically, I've just been in private life my whole life, mm -hmm. doing uh, management work. Management work? and uh, Food industry, yeah. And, and you're part of the, uh, the National Liberty Alliance. Yep, yeah. I got well. started uh, a couple years ago. I met Richie about a year ago. Um, I'd been studying for a number of years, and uh, my wife wanted me to stay off the radar. So once I got divorced, I jumped in. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what is basically the mission statement of the National Liberty Alliance? To bring back the common law grand jury, which is uh, was stolen from us in 1946. All they did was they added footnotes to the Code of Criminal Justice Procedure and declared it obsolete. Now, you've got to keep in mind that... Who declared it obsolete? Well, we don't know the individuals, but it was either attorneys, judges, clerks, somebody in the judicial branch of the government. And the, and the thing is that people have to understand is the Fifth and Seventh Amendment, which are in the Bill of Rights, are yours. They're God-given rights, not government-given, right. God-given. 
and they took them from us. That's why me and Dana are here. We're fighting to get it back, and we will get it back. It belongs to us, the people, not the government. Interesting. And so what about this grand jury? Tell me a little bit about it. What, what, what is that you're trying to do? How you know, are you best, trying to reestablish this? The best place for people to go and, and take a look at some information on it is U.S. versus Williams, where Justice Scalia, who was recently, who passed, ahead, passed recently. Yeah. We believe he was terminated. He, he, uh, he wrote extensively in, in U.S. versus Williams about the, um, the common law grand jury being a right of the people. Common law grand jury started back with the Magna Carta in 1215. It has always been a part of our, our culture. Uh, it was a part of our country all the way up until 1946. What it is is a, an op is a it is a like a fourth branch of government that is not controlled by government. It is separate by, from the government, and it is operated by we the people. And what happens is uh, a, a grand jury of 25 people will get together. They generally operate in secret, outside of the authority of the governing people. You know, the judges, the attorneys, and that sort of thing. And they investigate uh, criminal activity. Uh, suspicious activity, they basically can investigate anything. They can be called on by a sheriff or by a judge to, to meet and investigate something, but they also can investigate things that they decide to investigate. If they find that there's criminal activity happening or they think there's a suspicion, reasonable suspicion, they can indict or do a presentment. Presentment is similar to an indictment that says, go to the, take it to a judge here, we believe criminal activity, or the sheriff, go arrest. And, and that's how, it's interesting, you can see some some cases historically of uh, grand juries managing their local government simply by you know, investigating their uh, expenditures, um, the things that have happened, and, and putting out a policy on that or a public statement on that. You know. So it's basically an opportunity for we, the people, to prevent the overreach and the oversight and the criminal activity in government, which is rampant nowadays. If, if so just an issue that's coming up, we're all heard about it, the Hillary emails. Yeah. Okay. So we have the executive branch that is in part of the, that is in charge of the Department of Justice, mm -hmm. which has a self interest in protecting itself from any criminal activity right. of, of anything that's happening under its, under its watch. Uh, if you've watched Fox News, I've heard Judge Napolitano say things of, about the p potential grand jury after the FBI investigation. and. Everybody knows that there is a grand jury. There's already one in existence, and they say you know, a grand jury could uh, basically indict a ham sandwich. Mm -hmm. uh, we're talking about something different than Very different. this type that of grand, grand jury. grand jury that you're referring to, Kevin, is one that, that when they took the, the courts, or, I'm sorry, the <coughs> juries over in 1946, now the government controls them. They'll give you a stack of paper to fill out when you're a jurist, say, fill this out. That's jury tampering. You're doing a psychological profile on you. So they can select the jurors that they want. Or to get whatever. an outcome. Right. A given Selecting their outcome. Right. They're soliciting the outcome. What it's supposed to be, and what it says in U.S. versus Williams, and if you go back to uh, Section 61 of the Magna Carta, it also defines it back there. And, the, and Justice Scalia backs it up. This is part of the, it's, it's to root out corruption in government, but the fact that it's in the Bill of Rights says it's yours. It's the people's. It has not, these are his words, it has not been textually assigned to the Constitution. It's in the Bill of Rights. We own it, and our job is to police it. For example, I'm the sheriff, hopefully, and somebody comes to me and says, hey, this dean assaulted me or dean stole my money or something. All right, well, and he's a, he's a uh, judge. Am I going to go to the district attorney to say, hey, we got a problem with this guy? Of course not. Just just touch the the court, well, the courts are, are corrupt, and I'm saying that they're corrupt. If they come to the sheriff, it's the sheriff's job to, form, to call a, a grand jury and ask for an indictment on behalf of the people, not the state, but the people. And if that happens, then I go arrest Judge Dur uh, Kern. But can't that happen today? No, because the jury system is controlled by the government, not by the people. If you read U.S. versus Williams, and I, I encourage all your people to do it, you can get this stuff online and Google. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's very specific. Interesting. Well, we've had many people on the show in the past, and we've <coughs> talked about uh, the courts and some of their failings. And there's one that keeps coming to mind, and it, it really troubles me, and it has to do with uh, Tanya Kennedy. She's a Not woman. Familiar. 
you wouldn't unless you've watched mm -hmm. the show. It's just a, just an instance where this is a woman who uh, was divorced, married another woman. The mo woman was a police officer that she married. The police officer used her, beat her. Eventually, her son pulled the police officer, her, her wife, off of her. Uh, police officer went to jail, lost her position as a police officer. because She was in Massachusetts, but they lived in New Boston, mm -hmm. which was a situation in itself. Tanya was making six-figure income. She worked for one of the health associate, uh, hospitals in, in Massachusetts, came down with Lyme disease, lost her job because she couldn't uh, move, couldn't move, uh, and she's struggling. In the meantime, there was a divorce that was in the process because of the domestic violence. I'm making a long story, I'm trying to right. narrow it right. down. But the, the court said that both parties need to freeze their assets while the proceeding was going on. When the cop got out of jail, or the former police officer, I should say, she started leveraging the properties. Anya went to the judge, Michael Ryan, and said, look, there's a problem here. She's leveraging the properties, and now I'm in a hole, and I'm, I'm, I'm the victim. To make a very long story short, Tanya is now homeless. Let me just and and the, the perpetrator is now living in a beautiful home in, in Florida, thanks to one of the judges who refused to listen. And come to find out, maybe the judge went to law school with the attorney that was representing the... Incident. That happens a lot. And, and it's, it's tragic because, uh, you know, we have a friend that <coughs> lost her child. Uh, you know her. She lost custody and, and can't visit her, her son. Mm -hmm. It's because her ex-husband was familiar with the judge and, and so how does was it, treated favorably. How does an individual get justice? Now... You don't, and the reason you don't is because they're operating independently, like you said, autonomously, without oversight, and they are, the court system is a privately owned corporation. They're not a public corporation. They're privately owned corporations that operate under their own rules. They make up the rules as they go, and they operate with a language that is not the English language. It's called legalese, and it looks like English, but it's different. They operate in a jurisdiction that is not on the land jurisdiction, which is common law, which is this document, common law. That's They're operating under admiralty court, admiralty law system, maritime law. They're usurping people's fundamental rights. They treat them as though they, I'm not going to, I'm not making this up. They treat them as though they are lost vessels at sea, we the people, dead entities. That's why they say all rise when you bring it into the court because they're all rising from the dead so that they can talk to them. When you go by the bar, you're walking onto the ship. It's an admiralty law jurisdiction where they operate under entirely different system than what the United States was built on, which is common law. Can I now, for, yep. for people who like to watch movies, yeah. have you seen that movie called uh, Mars, the, the recent movie? Uh, well, there, there's a movie out with uh, and they're on Mars, and the, the guy's taking the, the equipment under maritime law because there's nobody around. I'm just okay. trying, trying <laughs> okay, to bring it yeah. into like a perspective. Context, okay. Uh, but it, the thing that's coming to mind now that you have this understanding, you know, that, that we're, we're looking at two things that are, are totally separate but have, have the, the color of law. Yes. One is operating under one facet. One is un, un, operating on another. People are going to look at it and say, hey, look, you're, you're kooks for, for, for saying this. And others are saying, no, 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 they're right. Mm -hmm. um, how, how do you bring bring people into understanding. It's ignorance. It's, it's, yeah, it's hard. It's ignorance, Kevin. Listen, it's I can tragic. tell you this it's much. It's difficult. Gene talked about it um, briefly, but when you talk, this is common law. No, I don't think anyone can dispute, dispute this. The Declaration of Independence, the Bill of Rights, and the Constitution are all um, common law. That makes common law the law of the land, mm -hmm. which is this. If you went into court under common law, which you're supposed to do because people are the sovereign, the government works for us. That's what I tell the kids okay. today. Oh, mm -hmm. that's a fact. You're the boss, I'm the servant, that's I a listen fact. to Just you. because the lawyers have stolen, or the judges, the judicial system, stole it from us, if I steal your car and put it in my garage, does it make it mine? Of course not. Well, they stole something from me, and I'm getting it back. Now, so under, under I, common I, law, though. Let me interrupt you real quick, though. Yeah. You, I understand where you're coming from this, and I, and I think some of my, my viewers do as well. You went up to Concord the other day mm -hmm. to talk to Judge Ed Kelly. Now, he's the head of the family courts. Uh, right. What were you trying to gain from that? 
with this understanding, knowing that you're going to talk to a judge that probably has a different view on it than this? I submitted paperwork to him on the common law grand jury. Yeah. I told him instead of putting this in the courtroom, give it to the common law grand jury. If you have 25 people sitting in a situation where there are children involved, I know that if I'm on that grand jury, I care about those kids. Mm -hmm. I don't want to put them in some money-generating <coughs> circle that they have with CPS and the foster uh, program. And I'm not, I'm not condemning everybody, by the way, by saying this. Mm -hmm. But what I do find is under common law, you can go into court and you can resolve this with the jury administrators that were supposed to be set up at no cost, zero. Okay, if the common law grand jury administrators don't resolve it within 40 days, it's turned over. And I'm not talking about just a criminal matter. I'm talking about resolving issues with children or homes. I thought this was designed to uh, protect us from you have to know it, and you have to enforce it. This, is, this book hasn't done anything other than sit on my desk. And if the people don't read this and don't understand this and don't start yelling at the judges, and well, forget attorneys because they don't work in government. Under the title of nobility clause, uh, the 13th Amendment, the original one, you're not supposed to be working in government. But that's another story for another day. And well, I actually brought you a the, copy of the, that. The idea was, is this was to protect us from the uh, equity courts. courts not of, equity, advocacy. Courts of, Admiralty. But part of that was the courts of equity. I mean, family courts is, are, are courts of equity. Well, law and equity are mentioned in here. They have the right to do that. Admiralty, I mean, I don't know your personal background, but I don't think you're in the Navy or anything. I know he's not, and I'm not. You have no right going into an admiralty jurisdiction if they trick you. Admiral so who's equity you need. you got to have equity courts for yeah, contracts. Contract. And how did this, and this, this happened in 1946 at the end of the war? Yeah, exactly. That was the for the usurpation of the I wasn't common around law grand then, jury. So <laughs> who knew about it? The corporate structure happened way back with uh, Lincoln. You know, when Lincoln was president and the uh, South seceded, for three years there was no U.S. government, so they created a corporation. They started operating as though it was the U.S. government. And the federal the Fed, the banking cartel, bought that corporation in 1912. 1913 started the currency. And from then on, been running our currency, which now is 2% of the value it was back when they started. They are the ones running the system. Bankers. Can I mention two videos, uh, <laughs> documentaries, Kevin, that might help you? Sure. Yours? One of them is um, What Happened to the Constitution on YouTube. And the other one is um, Season of Treason by Kurt Kellenbeck. They're both very good videos, and they'll bring people back to 1860 right up until today and as to what happened. And they can document and research this on their own. But people start, have to start getting involved in understanding this. We wrote this for the government to obey, not the other way around. Government didn't exist. All the states got together, the 13 original states got together and signed this, and then we created the government, Article 1, 2, and 3. It's right in here. I know the federal there was, government there, has nothing to do with it. There was recently a big push up at the Capitol to uh, have a convention of states, and they wanted New Hampshire to be part of that. And My biggest worry was if we did that, what difference is it going to make when our, the feds and, and everybody else they don't isn't following it now? They're not following it now. So why give the people who are trampling on the Constitution the right to amend it for right. their favor? Right. Here, here's another person that uh, is a fabulous instructor on oh, the yeah. Constitution, Chris Ann Hall, who actually is going to be here at the VFW in Milford, July 11th, 6:30 p.m. She's going to be speaking. But I thought she's she going to be up in Ringe as well. She's going to be up she there doing the week, training for yeah. the week with, with uh, Hal Shirtland at the. Yeah. At the it's for it's free. Camp? What is it? Now, are, are you folks also part of the John Burt Society? No, no. but we just know for him. a disclaimer. Yeah, yeah, we know him. No, no we're yeah. not part of it. Right. I know how to. I've had him on yeah. the show. I in admire the past. Hal. He's a good yeah. guy. Yeah. Yes. The show's open to everybody. So if you, if anybody who is progressive or wants to come on the show, by all <laughs> means, come on the show and talk. The whole idea is to give you the opportunity to speak up and and to tell your story. And uh, very very eager to do that. Now we've talked about the First Amendment, the Second Amendment, the Fourth Amendment. Uh, Fifth Amendment. Uh, I, I see as a senator, I see the 14th Amendment under attack all the time. The 14th Amendment made everybody a slave. It didn't free the slave, the black slaves back with Lincoln. It made everyone a U.S. citizen, which, makes, which takes you from having all of your fundamental rights as a, as a person of the land or a, or a state citizen and puts you into a subservient position with the U.S. government saying that now you have the privileges that we afford you. You no longer have all your fundamental rights. What I, what I understood it to be was that, that there's equal protection under the law. 
And that, that's under the umbrella from what my understanding and perspective. The umbrella as a U.S. citizen. Well, supposed which to be says, helpless we'll give you right? equal protection of the privileges we give you. That's right. it. Well, I, again, that's, that's one of the, the, the it's, it's, it's here though, right? <laughs> There's 27 of these. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. we, we got the original 13th right in here, which was the U.S., uh, the Constitution for the United States, which says uh, yeah, no, yeah. no one of nobility, uh, it's on the very last page if you want to look at it. Title of the nobility, yeah. um, 13th, the original 13th Amendment is what it is. I just wanted to point out quickly one other thing. The Seventh Amendment in here, not many people know this because they don't read it, and I haven't even heard experts on the Constitution mention this, but the second sentence in the Seventh Amendment says any fact tried by a jury, grand or petite, it doesn't matter, cannot be otherwise reexamined in any court in the United States. What that means is the jury, <coughs> any fact that they, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, mediate over? Maybe that's the wrong word. But any, any fact that they make a determination on can't be reexamined in any court, including the Supreme Court. That's because the people have the power. Only that's been taken away. That gr that jury system was taken Turned over by the down. government. Yeah. I'm saying I want it back, and I'm hoping everybody in America says the same thing. There's no legislation. It's here in the supreme law of the land. Read U.S. versus William. It supports this. Read Article 61 in the Magna Carta. It supports this. I'm not making this up. It's here. The law. You don't have to file any legislation. So I got a, a little over a minute left for the show. Um, how can people get in touch with you to talk with you about this? Richie, oh. and I, Richie and I do our own TV show up in Manchester, New Hampshire. It's called Inform New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a, an email, informnh at hushmail.com. And we also, uh, we're part of the National Liberty Alliance. You can look up nationallibertyalliance.org. We're the state coordinators for New Hampshire. We hold weekly meetings. The meetings are listed on the website. There's also a civics course on National Liberty Alliance, which is a great civics course, 120 hours, fabulous information that people can study. Are you affiliated with the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance? No, it's a different entity altogether. I know, I know Eileen, who used to be the president. I don't know if she still is. Mm -hmm. um, Eileen Landis? Yep. I don't know if We've she's had her on the show. We meet, yeah. in, we meet in uh, Manchester every Wednesday evening, so people are welcome to join us. I, do you engage any college students at all? Uh, do you, we have, try. Yeah. <laughs> Not <laughs> successfully, but we try. <laughs> Young people are the one. This is, you know, look at me. I'm 64 years old. So, I mean, it's not like I'm a 20-year-old kid with my life ahead of me. These kids got to get out there, and they've got to uh, understand this stuff and realize the importance because I think we don't have a lot of time, and I don't really know. But I, you know, watching some of these shows, whether it's uh, either I, I've seen it on both the liberal and progressive and, and conservative shows where they go out and they say, hey, who's the president? Who's the yeah. who? Yep. And, and you, you scratch your head thinking, wait a minute, did these people graduate college? Yeah. Are they in college? What is going on? Yeah. Anyway, i got 17 seconds to the end of the show. Thank so you so much. I appreciate you guys Thank coming you on the show. Appreciate it. Thanks for speaking up, and, yep. uh, and it matters. Appreciate it. it matters. Anytime. Thank, thanks for watching. Speak up, and uh, if you have something to say, please come on the show and talk about it. Until next week, thanks for watching. Thank you for watching Speak Up, and we want to thank our sponsor, Aardvark, the Dean of Clean a carpet cleaner in the Nashua area. If you want to contact them, call 603-521-7657. Thanks for watching. Every day, citizens around the country are faced with new dilemmas. Dilemmas that affect them profoundly. Whether it's injustice, discrimination, falling through the cracks, scandals and cronyism, balances of power, ethics, religious freedom, state versus citizens and unfunded mandates, and the list goes on and on and on. Welcome to Speak Up. It's directed at those who have fallen through the cracks, and it gives them a voice. It's your turn to speak up, to stand up and fight back. The preceding program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters.